The sun had not yet risen. The sea was indistinguishable from the sky, except that the sea was slightly creased as if a cloth had wrinkles in it. Gradually as the sky whitened, a dark line lay on the horizon dividing the sea from the sky, and the gray cloth became barred with thick strokes moving, one after another, beneath the surface, following each other, pursuing each other, perpetually. Ken uncovered his heavy eyes. He yawned, then stretched. The other men still lay snoring in the dark cozy tent. Ken brought his wrist to his sleepy face and read the watch on it. It was 3 a.m. He flung over the sheet that covered him forced his weight on top of his feet. Ken chose his steps tactfully and carefully amidst the sleeping bodies before making outside dot as he neared the shore, each bar of the flowing ocean rose, heaped itself, broke and swept a thin veil of white water across the sand. Ken sat with his arms binding his knees. The murmuring of the waves helped him a lot in fighting the torturing silence within. The night air was cool and soothing as ever, and its soft touch made Ken's blood purr. The dark blue sky gave the moon a chance and rejected the light pollution from the sun. And the moon proved worthy of this chance, for its light struck upon the trees in the garden, making one leaf transparent and then another. Ken took a cursory glance around him before his tired eyes shot right back to the ocean. The flowers swam like fish made of light upon the dark green waters. But not all the flowers right now are actually flowers, Ken wasn't sure. Something was floating, floating and glowing in a mild gray color. It had long hair, but the rest of its body was blurred. Her beautiful face flashed at Ken, and her pointed nose conducted the moonlight down to her red appetizing lips. Ken got attracted to this, he picked himself up and stood on his feet. He could hear her call his name calmly, Ken, far away, faint and far. Ken was drugged, his mind blacked out, and he splashed his way into the waters. His brain was poisoned with a spell of attraction. Ken was curious. Ken was a fool. The traveling air blew empty spaces into the dark blue, and the glowing night ball in the sky lighted the way for Ken. What the young man ever wanted was a cool night breeze, and that was his mistake. Ken was approaching, the ocean was getting taller, and the creature waited. Soon enough, Ken crept out of his own splash like a jagged pony. His curious eyes melted into the beautiful face of this creature. He could see her forehead shine where the moonlight caught it, and how nicely her long hair traveled down her shoulders, and how her cheek was so truly carved as to be part of a globe. An accomplishing smile tore his lips, his black eyeballs danced around in jubilation, he was a fool, then he reached, he stretched, then he touched her hair. Something fell off his eyes, and his eyes opened. The spells left him, his poisoned mind recovered, his brain jerked back into consciousness. A twelve feet demon was before him. It had a rough brown reptilian skin, with a long promising fong. Her hair which was mistook for black was actually gray, dreadlocked with her victim's blood. Her lips were brown, hard and broken, and her tongue crept out of the dark mouth hole like a black mamba. It had no legs, as Ken had taught earlier, but a long fish tail with its length as much as two Camry cars. Her eyes glowed green, in collaboration with the moonlight. Ken gulped. He took a step backwards and gulped again. His heat beat faster, and his body vibrated like an electric buzzsaw. It was then that he caught the foul stench, dead people white with maggots, floating. Ken looked back, his tent is way far now. His trembling mind reminded him of his sleeping friends he left behind, Ken's lips began to mutter. Tears filled up his tear duct before taking a walk down his cheeks, sipping into his muttering lips and tasting like salt. He had been tricked, he had been a fool, the sea demon dug its long bony claws into Ken, even before he could blink an eye dot he gasped in pain and curved his upper to the rip-roaring sensation of pain, blood gurgled down his ajar lips. He could feel fingers scrambling inside his internal, index finger crushing the oracles of his heart. A breathtaking painful sensation. Screaming for help won't help, and running away, not a chance. The night breeze was his only comforter now, descending softly on his wounded body, she pulled him towards her, slowly, like how you would pull a heavy sack of potatoes. Blood flushed down from Ken, in a tiny fine pour. Ken could perceive her breath now, 
he could see the moonlight rays stream into the depths of her nasty hair as into a hazel copse. He could see the cold fingers plucked still into him. He could witness his damaged intestines slime off her wrists and drop into the ocean with a gentle plop, just like large noodles. She began to submerge Ken into the coldest embrace of the dark ocean. Ken gasped for more air, and his punctured lungs struggled for him. Within the fastest second, the ocean demon vanished with Ken, or what was left of Ken, going. Ken dare open his eyes in the blue-black ocean, going. He saw them, the blurred vision of them, but in their numbers, each with fish tails and octopus tentacles, going. He could feel himself being eaten, he could hear them sniffing and grunting over his torn belly like sows nuzzling for acorns, he could see, he could see his blood turning the waters red. Ken's black eyes, after slow, round ruminating gazes at the shreds of his own skin traveling down, way down, into the ocean floor, fell together, then they opened, then shut again, and were never opened, gone, for a long time there was none, beyond the voice of a weak bird singing a trite old evening song. Nothing indeed, to remember Ken ever existed, except his three centimeters intestine still floating, which would still decay, like the other men, as slow sad days pass by.